Good evening, Bearcats. All right, we are on 1.8, day two, composition of functions. Um, when we're finding the composition of a function with another function, we're really using the solution of one of your functions as the input for another. Okay, I know that seems a bit complicated, but so can life be complicated. So let's work a few examples and see if we can uncomplicate this situation. Here we go. We're gonna be given two functions. The first is f of x equals x plus two. That's simple enough. And then we have g of x, and that is four minus x squared. All right, our first situation is we're gonna fog. And I know this is a bit of review from algebra two, but I'm going to refresh your memory one more time. Okay, fog is really f of g of x. And I suggest very strongly that you always rewrite it like this, f of g of x. Visually, it'll help you know what to do. All right, so we're gonna say g of x, and we're gonna replace g of x with what the um, function is equal to. So we know that g of x is actually four minus x squared. So now I'm gonna come down here and write that f, and instead of g of x, it's f of four minus x squared. If that were just f of four, you would easily tell me that you plug in the four for that x in the f function but it's f minus x squared. So you're gonna plug in the entire piece of um, information into where the x value is. So let's do that. So we're gonna take, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in parentheses, four minus x squared, and then we still have plus two as part of our function. Um, because this is just adding and subtracting and there's no squared terms on the outside, we can drop the parentheses and you get four minus x squared plus two. We're gonna combine like terms. We have a four and a positive two. So we have negative x squared plus six. And there's our first example. Go Bearcats. Not too shabby. All right, let's move on to the next one. Our next example, example B, we're gonna kinda of reverse it. We're gonna do golf. We're gonna do g of f of x. Again, always rewrite. So we're gonna write g of f of x. Yes, that's the bell. All right, remember our two functions. I'm gonna write them up here again. Our f function is x plus two, and our g function is four minus x squared. We're using the same functions, but we're reversing now. All right, so we're gonna plug in, we're gonna write g, and instead of f of x, we're gonna write what f of x is equal to, which was x plus two. Now, we're gonna plug in x plus two. We're gonna plug in this chunk of information in for this x right here. Be really careful because that x is squared. So we're gonna go four minus and then a parentheses and the chunk of information goes in the parentheses. The x plus two inside the parentheses, the square on the outside. And now it's just algebra and we're going to simplify. So you've done the composition part, we're now simplifying. Just to refresh your memory, there's a shortcut we've talked about several times this year to squaring binomials. I strongly suggest you learn the shortcut. Remember, when you have that binomial squared, I'm gonna do it over here to the side and then we'll do it again. So we'll do it twice. So you might wanna watch once and then do it with me or do it on your own. Remember, you can always pause and work on your own and then check your answers. That's a really good way to do this. All right, so when we have x minus two squared and we wanna take the shortcut, you square the first term, so it'd be x squared you multiply all the way through. So it's gonna be x times two times two. So that's a four x. And then you square the last term, two squared would be four. And there's your trinomial, and it just saves you a little bit of time. So all of this now replaces this. All right, so here we go. So now we have this four, and we have a subtraction sign. Remember, when every time we have a subtraction sign, you have to be really careful about distributing your negative. So I'm gonna replace thy chunk of information here, which will be x squared plus four x plus four. We're gonna distribute the negative all the way through. So you're gonna have four minus x squared minus four x minus four. And then we're just gonna simplify. I see a positive four here and a negative four here. What happens? You got it, we get to cross those out. And now we have negative x squared minus four x as our final answer. Okay, you might wanna pause before we go to the next one and take a look at these again, just to make sure that you're doing okay. 
All right. Okay. We're going to continue and we're going to work example C. We're going to be using those same two functions again. So I'm going to write those at the top up here. So remember that is f of x equals x plus 2. And our g of x function is still 4 minus x squared. All right, for example C, we're going to do g of f of negative 2. Actually, sometimes you're going to feel it's easier when you have a number to plug in. Um, but just make sure that you're plugging into the correct one. Again, always rewrite. We're going to write g of f of negative 2. All right, this time I just want you to kind of cover up the g for a minute and look at what f of negative 2 would be. So we'll go ahead and write your g down here, and we're going to have g of something in a minute. We're going to figure that out. We're going to put a negative 2. We're going to go to our f function, and this is not f of x now. It's f of negative 2. That means we would plug the negative 2 in for this x. So. To solve this part right here, it would be negative 2 plus 2, which would be 0. So now 0 replaces that part right there. And now you have g of 0. So we have g of 0, so now the 0 goes into the x in the g function. So let's do that. So we have 4 minus parentheses 0 squared. 0 squared, of course, is 0, and your answer is simply 4. All right, go Bearcats. That's really good. We're going to move on to our last concept for the evening, and that will be our domain. We're going to talk about domain. All right, when we talk about domain, we've done that a couple of times this year, or actually several times this year, and mostly you have to remember and be concerned when there is a restriction of the domain. And we've had two big restrictions this year. Let's review those. We have a restriction of our domain when we have a fraction. So if we were to have 1 over x, let's say, the issue is, is that we may not have a 0 in the denominator. So our denominator cannot equal 0. It could be any number except 0. Now, Please make sure you don't you understand, let's do another little example, if this was 1 over x minus 3, then x can't equal. It's not 0 it can't equal, it's what makes the whole denominator 0, and in this case it can equal 3. So those are just examples of a restriction, so you need to make sure you understand the restrictions. The other restriction has to do with a square root, and you'll learn later this year any even root, but we'll just talk about a square root for right now. So if I have a square root of x, the x value underneath has to be greater than or equal to 0. So in other words, it can be 0 or positive. Okay, so let's take a look at our final example for the evening. This example is really, we're going to solve it, but we're also going to make sure we're careful about our restrictions. Uh, remember, if it's a basic polynomial, there are no restrictions. If it's a linear equation, there, well, which is a polynomial, there are no restrictions. Okay, you only right now are mostly concerned about fractions and even roots, and mostly right now fractions and square roots. There'll be a few more along the way, but those are the big ones right now that you need to be concerned about. All right, so the example for domains. We're going to have two new functions this time. Our f of x function is actually x squared minus 9. And our g of x function is the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, before we do any compositions, we are going to do the composition of f of g in just a minute. But before we do this, I immediately look and say, all right, this polynomial is quadratic, has no restrictions. Okay, so the uh, domain would be all real numbers, and anything would work, or negative to positive infinity. But this square root has a restriction. Okay, So it's like stop and look. We need to go ahead and figure out what the restrictions are here before we even move on. Because even when we do the composition, if our composition comes out to be something new that looks like there's no restriction, there really is one because originally you would have had to be careful of your restrictions or you could have never started the problem to begin with. So let's take a look at what this would be. Remember we said that underneath the house, underneath the square root, has to be 0 or positive. So let's figure out what makes it 0. 
we have 9 minus x squared. We're just going to say equals 0. If I move the x squared over, it becomes a positive x squared. So I'd end up with positive x squared equals 9. If I solve that, I would square root. And remember what happens, we are the artist. If we're the artist, what do you do? You sign your artwork, plus or minus. So you have x equals positive or negative 3. Now, our restrictions are more than positive or negative 3. That's what makes it 0. We need to know if our restrictions, if our domain is between positive and negative 3 or greater than 3 and less than negative 3. So just plug something in mentally. Go back to your problem and think. Something between negative 3 and 3 would be 0. If I plug a 0 in here, 9 minus 0 is still a positive number. So that would be a good thing. So all our restriction, our domain is between negative 3 and 3. So this domain is x values between negative 3 and 3. And they can be equal to. Because we're in a pre-cal class, I would prefer you not to write set builder notation. I'd prefer you to write interval notation. Hey, by the way, just received an email from a college student who had me last year and said she was one of the only few in her class that knew what interval notation was. And that's all they're going to use. So learn it this year. It'll help you in the future. So go ahead and write as interval notation, negative 3, comma, oops, negative 3, comma, 3. Okay, that will be your domain. So now you've really already done your domain. And unless you have a double restriction, then you're really done writing the domain. Let's go ahead and figure out what fog would be. So it's really f of g of x. That means we're going to place the g of x information here. That's the square root of 9 minus x squared. So we have f of the square root of 9 minus x squared. This looks complicated, but keep going because sometimes in life, as in math, as you move on, things become clearer and less complicated as you go on. So we're going to now take the square root of 9 minus x squared and we're going to plug it in to our f function for that squared term. Remember, you want to put it in parentheses. So I'm going to have parentheses, the square root of 9 minus x squared, close the parentheses, and a square on the outside, minus 9. All right, I'm going to put a big smiley face over here because look what happened. We have a square root and a square. We know they cancel. As I said, sometimes things become less complicated as you move forward. So now we just have 9 minus x squared minus 9. And look, our 9's will cancel. And our final answer, woohoo is x, negative x squared, and that's it. So, go Bearcats. Okay, missed you guys in class today. I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you have taken good notes so that we can get through our assignment in class tomorrow and move forward into some more exciting math. Good night.